What's going on guys, Zenos here and today in this video of Excess Heroes, yet again, let's discuss about the Fate Core Jinai and are you supposed to be summoning her or not? Well, I'm gonna give you my own insights, uh, but before that one, I gotta say to you guys this, that there is actually a new notice on the Fate Core Jinai that the flow of mana and the charm effect is now added on her skill list and that actually makes a lot of changes. Uh, before, we were actually kind of like having this doubt about her like should you be really summoning her or not i'm like it's she really better than the normal genai this fate core genai that we are having recently because she does she did not have that flow of mana and the charm being described in her passive list but hey guys Thanks to the developers, this new notice has now confirmed that she is still going to keep that flow of mana and the charm effect, which actually makes a lot of sense because she's a general and she gotta have that flow of mana and the charm synergy effect, right? And with that thing said and done, well, it actually changes a lot of things. And uh, let's see what are the situations that could actually possibly happen with the Fate Core Genai in the battlefield. All right, let's get this started. Our waifu is actually much better. Anyways, this banner is going to start from October 1 till October 8, Thursday, 2020, 159 UDC. And well, you will be able to get this hero plus her Fate Core as well when you are, you are going to summon her. If you are successful at summoning her at 0.5% drop rate. And you can pity her at 28 Molda Summons. And well, I am prepared to Molda Summon her for 28 times. Okay, so there we go guys. Hold on for that video that I'm going to release tomorrow, the summonings video on Fate Core Genai. I've been waiting for her for a very long time. I'm gonna go deep, real deep. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Oh man, Fate Core Genai, man. She actually made us wait for so long. Anyways, now let's look into her passive skill effect yet again. All right, because there are changes, man. There are changes. Passive effect, mana observed for. Removes all buff from the targets and gain mana, which I think is totally bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> because most of the boss, the boss, you know, like they come from the passive effect and most of the passive effect, you know, you cannot just dispel them. And being able to like remove all the buff, it doesn't actually make much sense, okay? <laughs> it's too bad, it's really, really bad. Anyways, uh, let's just like skip that one. Now, there is something that she is going to apply on the opponents right off the bat when the battle starts and this is so good. There's a buff that she is going to apply. Increases attack speed of all allies on the same row as self by 20 points for 7 turn. You gotta remember that she is a chaotic unit, meaning like she will go in the back row whenever it's a Jevenstania battle or let's say the air squadron battle, right? So that means she is going to improve the attack speed of the DPS unit in your team. And that is super cool, super, super cool. If your DPS hero units are way faster than your opponents, man, <laughs> you will be able to unleash a lot of attack on the opponents before they can actually lay a finger on you. Maybe you might even actually be able to wrap up the battle, all right? So that's the condition right over here. And there's actually another statement that is added to this effect right over here. It says that this buff cannot be removed. Well, it's pretty much natural or it's like, it's, it's, it's already common, it's a common sense. Uh, increases two attack speed per buff removed. So if she somehow managed to remove the buff from the opponents, then at that time, she is going to increase the attack speed of the allies as well okay so there we go guys two attack speed per buff removed so if she removes like two buffs that means like four attack speed boost in addition to that 20 speed buff so total of 20 foot speed buff think about it man a total of five buff being removed then that means she is going to improve the attack speed of the allies by up to 30 points that's a lot okay the 20 points itself is a lot already Debuff decreases the attack of all targets by 40% for 7 turns and it cannot be removed as well. Decreases an ex by extra 2% per buff removed. So if there is 5 buff being removed, a total of 50% of attack will be reduced from the opponent. Well, I would say like in the PvP content, it's not really that effective because the signature force is the main meta. And I really don't think that this debuff is going to lay any kind of finger on that signature force damage output, all right? So that thing being considered, I would say this thing is definitely going to be a superb help in the Path of Trials and Chapter 12 or any kind of other PvE contents. In those kind of contents, definitely you are going to have easier time in handling those uh, really super overpowered opponents which have like massive attack stats, defense stats and many other things, alright? So in that case, man, uh, you are going to have much 
is your time to tackle with the opponents in the PvE contest like that, you know, what I call. Or maybe even in the Labyrinth as well. So now let's move on to the next thing. That's gonna be the flow of mana. Now, that was not indicated, that was not mentioned the last time, but now the devs have revised their error, okay? Well, they are so good at making errors, so, well, you know. <laughs> Flow of mana. Overtime effect. Back row allies permanently gain one mana. This is one reason why Jina is so awesome as well. There are only two hero units that can provide back uh, mana to the back row hero units. Uh, first it's gonna be Raquel and next gonna be uh, Jina. Yes, you might be calling. Yeah, Dorka can also do that. What? Well, Dorka is Omni, okay? So you can provide to the front row and the back row as well, okay? So that's another case. It's just in a different level. Uh, but for the Jina being able to provide that one plus one mana for the back row, she actually just improves the DPS capacity of the entire team. Uh, I mean, like, yeah, yeah, that one. Because like, obviously the offensive type of units are you know, like, confined to the back row, right? And that's really cool. I like that one. And having that additional mala is definitely going to allow you to spam more damage to the opponents. A charm. Afflicts enemies with lower attack than self with the charm mark and decreases their attack speed by 30 points. Think about it. Think about it. Okay, first of all, C is going to improve the attack speed of the allies in the same row by 20 points. And on top of that one, C is going to decrease the attack speed of the opponent by 30 points. 30 plus 50, uh, I'm like 30 plus 20, that's going to be 50 attack speed gap. 50 attack speed gap. Meaning like, just sum up, sum them up together. What are you going to actually get is that your alloy is actually going to be 50 speed more faster than your opponents and that is massive real massive <laughs> it's massive bro it's massive oh my god i don't know what to say about this wow 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 <laughs> oh my <laughs> oh my uh definitely a must have thing when you are trying to uh, oppress your opponents in the PvP continents, and even in the PvE continents, man, you'll have so much ample space time to, you know, like, beat your opponents, select your skills, and do whatever strategy you want to do, and, you know, like, you will be doing so many actions before your opponents can actually even lay a single finger on you. So, with that thing said, man, definitely a very great, stuff right over here the charm effect and this buff effect right over here which is going to give you so much speed advantage against the opponents 50 speed gap holy crap <laughs> holy crap holy mother man a superstar afflicts the attention mark for seven turns to the target when the skill hits increases all damage over time on the target with attention by 100 percent so that means i think it doubles the damage but some would say like it's 100 percent plus there's a little bit of confusion, but I would say like it just improves the overtime effect damage or let's say that dot damage the damage over time damages Yes, that's the only thing that's going to be doubled or let's say improved by 100% Okay, so that's all there is to it uh, Not really that great in my opinion, but well as C also is kind of expert in dealing that poison target uh, like poison damage to the opponents It's going to be a superb skill especially for the PV E contents, okay? For PvE content, it's superb, superb, superb. But for the PvP contents, it's a little bit doubtful, okay? That, uh, let's see, let, let's, let's see about that. A fan meeting. Afflicts the anti fan mark to the target when attacked. Uh, triggers double team with all living alloys if the health of the target with anti fan is at or less than 30%. Ev once every seven turns. One round usually consists of 10 turns, right? Five from your allies and five from your opponents. But in this case, it's going to reset every seven turns. Think about it. It's quite effective. And it's like a buffed up version. It's like a super buffed version of Final Head from uh, Jen, Baraka, right? Uh, in that case, this is definitely awesome, guys. And look at that. It's not asking for the 10% limitation, okay? 10% bar. It's, ask it's, 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 it's at 30% bar limit. 30% of HP or less than 30% of HP, it's a huge gap. So, if you somehow manage to get the HP of the opponent at 30% or less than 30%, it's pretty much game over for them because Jinai is actually going to use all the living allies there is in one single attack. And yes, there are some people who are also saying that like, hey, come on, bro. 
the other alloys are definitely are gonna be of different element and if they especially if they are elementally enhanced wow it's gonna be so easy to break the guards and stone up the opponents but well you know like with all the powers combined I really don't think that opponent is actually going to stay alive unless that's a boss unit or something like that that's a different case scenario but well whatever that is man this is gonna be really really good the only thing right over here is that like can't you really inflict that anti-fan mark on the boss units <laughs> now that is another question right over there anyways whatever now let's move on to our active skill number one okay stage dominance it says it requires only one mana and uh, pretty cool enough uh, it deals damage to all the enemies, it deals 51% damage to all the enemies. Over time effect, poison targets causing 31% damage every turn for 2 turns. I would say definitely not a really great skill to use in the PvP contents because like it lacks mana and signature force really does, you know like, it's it, it broods, it, it amplifies with more mana charge, okay? Which I think her second active skill is gonna do much better. Uh, the thing is that, with this skill, she is going to dominate in the PvE continents. In PvE continents, my god, man, this is so cool. This is really cool. I mean, like, she will always be out there to deal that damage right off to the opponents if she doesn't have active skill number two. But active skill number two, if she can deal it, she is good, man. <laughs> Think about it. Active skill number two, it says Lost and Core. Required mana, just only 5 mana. And the effect right over here, it says deals 178% damage to all enemies. The damage, the base damage itself is already good. She's also going to cast that poison effect on the opponents for 4 turns and dealing so much damage. On top of that one, her overtime damage is gonna be boosted by 100% as well. And well, the opponents are going to take a lot of damage in the PvE contest, in the story contest, chapter contest, path of trial contest, labyrinth contest, whatever that is. And when it comes to the PvP contents, man, with the help of Signature Force, it's definitely gonna be quite, uh, uh, you know, like, effective in annihilating the opponents. And most amazingly, okay, I would really love to say this to you guys, that one really curious fact about her is that even though she is a chaotic unit, she has really low attack speed. I think it's only about 36 attack speed point. So that means... She is going to go a little bit later compared to other allies. And that means when it comes to be her turn, she's already going to have more than 5 mana. That means she's not going to have any problem at all to unleash her active skill number 2 on the opponents, whether it be the PvE or the PvP contents, especially if you have Fate Core Iris around. Think about it, man. Think about it. That is so fun and that's really cool, isn't it? Okay, that's it and done, man. The main question is, should you be really summoning her or not? And I would say like, hell yeah. You should be really summoning her, guys. Really, really, really. She is so amazing, damn amazing. Look at the plethora of all the effects that she is going to provide to the team and inflict on the opponent just with her passive skill. Man. Screw that blue fate core, Raquel. He was a disgusting character, okay? But this one right away here, same rate, same PD summon rate, 0.5% uh, drop rate, and that uh, 28 multi PD summons. This girl, who is a wife, you man, come on. We are the man of culture, all right? We gotta get her. <laughs> She's so cool, she's so good, she's a waifu, and she has so amazing skill sets. Definitely with the signature force, she's even better, and she is a general on top of that one. And with all this thing combined, she just cannot go wrong. Can you actually tell me any kind of situation where she can actually go wrong? Having her multiple copies is just going to make your account even better, alright? So, if you can really pity summon her, go! Alright, like let's say if you have more than 20,000 sets, and you can pity her and you manage to get her even before you pity her still go on still go on okay even if you have 50,000 says go all in and try to get her multiple dupes so that you can totally unlock her signature force because you gotta unlock that tier 2 signature force in order to uh, maximize that elemental damage on the opponents right and that's gonna be really cool. I mean like per hit more than 20 to 25k damage on the opponents is 
humongous it's massive it's massive okay so that is it for today guys and uh, looking into every other things i, I, I don't want to talk about this exclusive fate core weapon whatever that is blah 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 looks pretty cool though looks pretty cool if you manage to get it hooray waha but my sense is totally for the hero units not for uh, those uh, pathetic weapons okay and that is it for today guys i hope you enjoyed this video please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button to keep on enjoying the content on my channel see you guys in the next video